Blender's sculpting has come a long way in the last couple of years. It's now really easy to create very detailed models like this in no time at all. This beast model took about an hour. This is partly down to new things like the VDM brushes, advancements in the multi-resolution modifier, and the remesh tool. So in this video, I'm going to break down the entire process. For those that need a really detailed course of this process from a beginner's perspective, you can grab my full course this weekend only for just $10, including a free pack of awesome VDM brushes. Link in the description. So I start all my sculpts the same way, and that's by blobbing out the shape. You're just trying to get the silhouette, and it doesn't matter what sort of primitives you use. You can use cubes or icospheres. You just blob them all out to get the outline shape. Then once you've got the basic outline, you join them together. So you select them all and press Control J, and then you have to remesh. That joins them all together properly without any overlap. Then you can just start going in and sculpting a bit more. It's a good idea to keep it on a nice low resolution. It works faster, it's easier to move the mesh around. And remember, we're still getting the basic shape. Anytime you're changing the shape drastically, you might want to use the dyne topo method, or you just pull out an area and then make sure you remesh it afterwards. That stops any big stretching of the mesh. If you have any objects, such as a tongue that can be easily separated, then make it a separate object and sculpt it separately. It's much easier and can be better for performance if you want to hide shapes. I could have probably done that with the horns, in fact, and that would have helped. If you are modeling a beast like this, then try and experiment and pull the shape about into weird places and see what you can come up with. The next stage is to remesh it to a relatively low poly count Try not to lose too much detail. So find a poly count or remesh count that works without losing too much detail, but you lower the poly count enough. Then add your multi-resolution modifier and subdivide to add detail. The multi-resolution modifier allows you to go to very high poly counts, and that's where you can start using things like the VDM brushes, which I'll talk about in a moment. Before you do that, you still want to work on the shape making sure the basic form is how you want it. You can see that I've added some eyes in there. Tiny eyes makes the beast look really big. My main go-to brushes are the grab brush and the crease brush. The crease brush allows you to get nice sharp edges when you use what I call the reverse crease, which is basically holding down control while you use the brush. And you can see me doing that on the horns here. And you can see me using that brush all over the place to add that sort of second level of detail and kind of muscular structure. Now I want to start sculpting the tongue, so I lower the resolution of the dragon's head so it doesn't cause performance issues when I'm sculpting the tongue and vice versa. Once we have that shape all looking good, we can start thinking about the brushes and the fine detail. I start off with basic alpha brushes, which are just black and white textures to give the model some sort of skin texture. I included some alphas in the pack that comes with the course. On top of this, I use the VDM brushes. Now these are special brushes that have a bit more detail in them and they're great for things like horns, scales, teeth, strange growths, or whatever you can imagine. And you set them up with an anchored stroke type. And when you do that, you can sort of pull things out and let the magic happen. There is a kind of limit to this. It's kind of down to your resolution you're using. But generally, if something is sticking out of your mesh a long way, then you want to sculpt that manually and small little things like the teeth or smaller horns then you can use the VDM brushes. If you do purchase the course and the pack, they're all kind of set up and ready to go with all the correct settings. You can make your own VDM brushes as well. It's quite straightforward and there's videos on the internet on that subject. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description for those. In terms of how much detail you want to add to your shape, I would say you want a good coverage of the entire model, but obviously you'll want to vary the different types of brushes throughout. And you need a mixture of big elements and small elements. So in some areas I've made these kind of scaly things quite big and other areas I've made them fairly small. And it's a good idea to have lots of references of different creatures like snakes and reptiles so you can get an idea of where those details should go. I've left some details in about how I rendered the final image in case you're interested in the node setup that I was using. You should be able to pause the video where you need to. I use a basic three point lighting system and the main node that I'm using is the pointiness node that helps to increase the shadows in all the cavities and some of the highlights as well. Now this style of modeling with the multi-resolution modifier can be really useful and it's used often in things like films or detailed animations, but not so much in games of course, because of the high poly count, you can't render very quickly. But if rendering isn't so important, you can still set up things like a rig and textures with the low poly mesh. And that's how I made these sculpts in about an hour and you can see the finished result here. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown. Do let me know of any questions you have in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.